Welcome back to the shop. In today's episode, I'm going to clean up this S-Wing axe. It is nothing extraordinary. I do just basically some maintenance on it by removing the rust and cleaning the handle. Along the way, I explain uh, and demonstrate a couple different types of sanders that I use in my shop. And that's about all I cover in this. So if that's what you're looking for, then I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. Let's try the DA sander. I don't use it. I imagine a wire wheel would work pretty good. You could sand it by hand, but um, but we'll try the DA. One tip about air tools is, is, from what I've heard, you never want to buy air tools from a body guy because they don't put oil in the tools because it ends up blowing you know oil back on the finish and that messes the paint up. So again, don't buy stuff from body shop guys. I oil my tools. So we can see that's done a pretty good job of removing most of the rust. However, the finish on this isn't isn't great. The round of morbid leaves quite a bit of you know, those oscillations. It's random, but or DA sander to dual action, so that you can see sort of the. I don't know if you'll be able to catch it, but there's a lot of little swirly motions in there, little C's and whatnot. I think we'll take this over to the belt sander and the wire wheel and the fiber wheel, and see what kind of surface finish we can get on this. I'm going to leave the other side for now, so as a before and after. With just a couple minutes worth of work with the DA sander, and the, the belt sander doesn't get into it, it does a good job along the round surfaces, but these semi-flat surfaces, the, the ideal, the belt sander isn't ideal for that situation. So, so I use the wire wheel and then the buffing wheel to try to clean this surface up a little bit. Anything that's high carbon with rust on it is going to get deep pitting, which is going to be really hard to get out. And this is a working tool, it's not a wall hanger, so I'm not too worried about polishing this thing to get it to look like some Scoutcrafter kind of pop polish. I just want to get it usable again, but, but at the same time, you know, the, the reason that they, they go to the high high finish polishes on these is because it gives you less surface area for stuff, for grit and grime to get in there and to, to tarnish. So I, I could probably, I should do a better job at removing some of this rust. So we'll get a different sander and we'll bring this down just a little bit. I, I'd like a, a better finish on this. And again, this is this is what we were starting with. So we want to improve that a little bit. I'd like to improve that a little bit. We used the DA at first, but now I have this just rotary sanding tool. It, it really moves a lot of material quickly. Well, is that saying it's going to get worse before it gets better? This is going to really take off a lot of material. So far this seems to be the most effective tool. It, it will not leave the desirable end finish. I'll, I'll still need the, the, the fiber wheel to go ahead and get that final finish. But this seems to be the most effective in terms of speed. But while I'm showing you all these different rust removal tools, let's use the old standard, you know, the four and a half inch angle grinder. And we'll take a look and see how quick it works on this side. Now with that, you can see that we've sort of polished the rust, and that's not at all what you want to do. And you can, it's deceiving sometimes when you're wire wheeling things, because you get what is ostensibly a good looking surface, but you haven't gotten below all the crud that's in there. And that's why the, you know, the, the brace of sandpaper is good, because it gets below that crud. <laughs> Yeah. 
in roughly the same amount of time we're down below the rust it's still going to need some more work but, but sandpaper can be preferable to a wire wheel in many instances well now that I have it mainly de-rusted it it's looking pretty good but but in some of these corners there's just no easy way to get in there with a with a larger tool so having a, a little die grinder with the sanding pad, a flappy pad can be really handy and especially the worn out ones because now it's not so aggressive it's not going to leave those big drag marks in there from the factory this was painted I'm not sure that I like the idea of the paint there so if, if I was going to paint it, I want to leave that surface a little bit, you know, scratched up wouldn't be a bad thing, give it a little bit more surface area to grab to. But I'm going to bring this over to the fiber wheel, and we'll go ahead and fiber wheel this whole thing out, and then we'll finish it up with some furniture polish. Now this fiber wheel that I keep talking about, if you're new to the channel, it's a company called UXL. They're about $9, and they're a, a, a wonderful tool that's a middle ground between, between buffing and wire wheeling. It gives you a nice burnished finish on things, so I will put a, a screenshot of it up now, so you know what I'm using. And we'll just clean this up with some, some hand soap. As a side note, one of the best modifications to my shop was this industrial hand soap dispenser and paper towel dispenser it it really is nice to have a big thing of soap and not have a bunch of little tiny containers floating around but uh but so it's been a great addition it's not not cheap initially to get started but i think in the long run it'll pay for itself i can actively see this head tarnish between me sweating on this and the 100 percent humidity up it's uh you know actively tarnishing right now so put some paste wax on it And then this will dry and provide a nice layer of protection like the uh, like a workbench or a tabletop for a table saw. That came out pretty nice. So there we have it. This is a, you know not a not a restoration or anything, it's more maintenance. You can see that the regular hand soap does a pretty good job of cleaning the handle up. And then with just a couple minutes of work with the sander, with, with whatever type of sander you want, you get the job done. But I would, I would say that, you know, abrasive sanding things like, like this or a flap disc on your, your angle grinder would be preferable to a wire wheel in this particular instance. There's other hybrid modes where you've got paint stripping discs and things like that. These are cost prohibitive in my opinion for things like this. While they work fast to strip paint and remove rust, for me I'm not in a rush. I'm not making money doing this stuff so to, to eat a $5 wheel or, a, or an $8 wheel or whatever they are as opposed to a, a three cent piece of sandpaper. I very rarely use these. It's only if it's really hot out and I'm in the sun. But I think this turned out alright. Uh, again not, not too cerebral or anything but just wanted to show you how I go about cleaning this up. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I hope you're having a good day.